Hello, my name is Jenna Kara. I am the co-chair of the editorial committee for CSPC 2018. Today, I am joined by two participants, Ellen Gut and Molly Sung, and they're going to be telling you a little bit more of their student-based organization in Toronto. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, Ellen, do you want to tell me a little bit more about what your organization is and your objectives? Yeah, I'm very happy. So we are the Toronto Science Policy Network. We are a newly founded student group at the University of Toronto. And we want to provide the larger University of Toronto community a platform to learn more and engage in the science and policy interface. Fantastic. And so what are some of your upcoming events or projects within the organization? So we focus on like three uh, things to do. One is the educating people about what the science policy, science policy interface means. The second one is um, communicating background, scientific background uh, to current or pressing policy issues. And then also in the future, uh, looking to career development opportunities for students and postdocs especially. Um, and so we started a one-on-one -on -one workshop series where we had an event um, in October on science advocacy. We have one upcoming next week on uh, the science and public policy interface. Um, and we will continue in this workshop series throughout the year and perhaps next year on different topics including then science communication, science diplomacy. And on top of this we have panels. Yeah, uh, so in terms of our, our public outreach, uh, we did do, we started our, our year actually with a Wikipedia edit-a-thon and we edited and updated and created pages of um, people in STEM who are from underrepresented communities and we had over 25 articles that were updated or, or created and it was something that was uh, important to us to do. Uh, we also have a panel coming up in December on uh, the Ontario sex ed curriculum. Uh, this is something that's um, obviously very relevant in the news and to everyone really. Um, so we really wanted to highlight um, issues that are, are relevant to everyone that are current and specific to Ontario. Um, so uh, we, were, we are modeled and inspired by the work by SBE, but we wanted to put a little bit of a Toronto spin on it. So these are some fantastic initiatives that you have taken on, but I'm sure there are a lot of challenges associated with that, being students in science. So what are some of those challenges you can elaborate on? Um, well, first of all, I don't think people understand what science policy is. Um, when we started talking about what our club is to, to other students, most of them are like, well, what, what, what does that mean? And so our first challenge is to get across uh, what science policy is and what it means to us as students, as researchers, and uh, as scientists. And there are fine differences between mm -hmm. like science advocacy, science diplomacy, science and public policy mm -hmm. to really, and I think that's what the one-on-one -on -one workshop series wants to help with, to really get people from the policy world, from academia, to to tell about the background so that people, students, um, will also feel more comfortable in like environments like the conferences so to talk or engage in discussions about the topics. And how did you come up with the idea for the organization? Uh, it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. Uh, so, uh, full disclosure, my sister was president of Science Policy Exchange. Uh, Vanessa was, is, has always been a huge inspiration to me. And, we both started thinking about science policy about the same time and she had the framework already set up to really run with it. And um, this past summer I thought, you know what, it's time for Toronto to have our, our platform as well. So uh, I got together a group of people that I knew were interested and we just sat down in a coffee shop and hammered out what we wanted to do. That's how we started, yeah, <laughs> getting people more or less also by chance like together yeah. who are interested in that topic and finding that we have like a common interest in this and want to that's fantastic, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm sure it helped that your sister had already kind of piloted a similar program, but were there any challenges that you came across that you didn't expect at the beginning? Um, or lessons that you learned at all? Uh, I think it's for us starting from scratch and learning how to, how to write a constitution for our, our group and all that was all foreign and also I, we have brilliant people like Farah Kaiser on our team who are great SciComm people, um, but the rest of us are, are still pretty new to it. And so we we're just trying to get our uh, heads around how to how to communicate effectively and um, how to, especially uh, complex issues like science policy, are, are 
you know, they come with their own challenges. But I think all these channels are like also really opportunities for us to learn. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we are currently in the stage of getting more volunteers to yeah. uh, support the core team right mm -hmm. now for events, for planning, and also to move it forward into the future, like mm -hmm. next year or if, when we graduate and such. Mm -hmm. And that to be like a, a challenge on one hand, but also like being an opportunity to learn about like the group dynamics, about how to manage such mm -hmm. a group. Uh, how to follow your vision. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's challenging sometimes, yeah. but I think it's a lot of good opportunities for yeah. all of us. And to I think, uh, sorry, uh, to add to that, I think another challenge for us, because we are very graduate student oriented, mm -hmm. it's sometimes really hard to get, or to convince students to come out to things, especially if they're, you know, either on the weekend and they want to take some rest from being at school, um, or, you know, asking them to take off an hour, an hour and a half in the middle of their, their work week. And it's, uh, graduate students are under a lot of pressure to, to produce work, um, good work, hopefully. Um, so to convince them that this is worthwhile, that professional development and science policy and, and things outside of the lab is, is worth doing is, is always something that I think we'll always come up against. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic you've taken your challenges to opportunities to actually being benefits for your organization, which is really great. Um, I'm happy that you both were able to come to CSPC to talk about your organization. But what do you both feel is the greatest value of the conference for you? To connect to people, yeah. to get the chance to, um, and also to live tweet from it, to <laughs> like get it out to the people who could not attend. Yeah. To get That's it out really and fun. then go back and like say, okay, this is what mm -hmm. we've learned. This is like what we got maybe even more motivation in doing. Mm -hmm. um, so take this home. Yeah. Um, for me, it was uh, coming to a conference where I could learn about such a wide range of things. So as a chemist, when I go to a chemistry conference, I stay in a session for the majority of my week. Here, I, this morning, I was I sat in on a session on on. Uh, the space program in Canada and this is not something I would have learned about otherwise and it was really fascinating and I'm just I'm so grateful to be able to learn about such a wide range of topics. Yes, uh, that's really fantastic. I'm happy you both enjoyed the conference and found it beneficial for you. Um, for our viewers, if they're looking for more information about your organization, where can they go? You can find us on Twitter uh, with the handle at TO Site Policy Network and there you can also find uh, links to like our Facebook, LinkedIn and webpage. Well, thank you both for joining me today. Thank you so much.